Hi everyone. We've been getting a lot of great questions regarding pressure control ventilation. So let's spend approximately 10 minutes diving into pressure control ventilation. The nomenclature on how we report pressure control ventilation studies vary depending on your ventilator and also varies in literature. Even the term used to describe pressure support varies between pressure control, P INSP, and pressure support. Additionally, some places report the delta pressure, so this means the pressure applied above PEEP, and some report the total pressure, which includes the PEEP. So you can see how this is be, can be confusing. Our objectives here are to discuss a few instances where we've advocated for use of pressure control ventilation at STARS, define pressure control ventilation in its settings, describe how to change from PCV plus to PRVC, review monitoring parameters, report and document the settings. So a few times we've advocated for pressure control ventilation at STARS. The first image is in cardiac arrest. So when a patient goes into cardiac arrest, switching to PCV plus can free up the practitioner set of hands to be able to perform CPR and other priority tasks. The second indication is a patient who cannot tolerate the ventilator in PRVC ramp up time. So patients who will have high inspiratory resistance and expiratory resistance at a rate of 10 may take a substantial time to be able to ramp up to the pressure. So in these patients, there might be a period of time where they are hypoventilated and can get hypoxemic. So these patients, we would advocate for switching to pressure control ventilation. The third one is if the patient is already on it. So I put a question mark here because as you can see, we're gonna talk about PRVC and PCV plus, and we're advocating that they're essentially both pressure control modes of ventilation and essentially are the same. So in PCV plus, the settings are the same as PRVC with one exception. So the settings, the rate, the eye time, the flow trigger, the oxygen, and the PEEP are the same that you would set as PRVC. The thing that differs is setting the delta P control. So by setting the delta P control, the operator is setting a constant pressure and the lungs will inflate. The volume they will get depends on resistance and compliance of the lung. In this mode, you're still aiming for a tidal volume of approximately 68 mils per kilo, but the practitioner sets the pressure and therefore needs to watch the volumes and adjust the pressure control in order to meet the volumes that you're aiming for. The additional benefit is there is no ramp up time. So as you can see in this example, if you set a PEEP of five, and a delta P control of 25, that's a total pressure of 30 on five, there is no ramp up time. The ventilator immediately gets the set pressure to 30 and the volume achieved is based on the compliance and the resistance. Just as in PRVC, you're still always bound by your alarms. You are still always bound by your pressure alarm, even though you are in pressure control mode. The other thing is best practice would be to set a tidal volume alarm and have some tight brackets because in pressure control mode when you set the pressure your volumes may vary and they may change based on a change in compliance or resistance. So the practitioner would want to be alerted if there's a change in the volumes because then the practitioner would need to increase or decrease the pressure in order to ensure you're targeting your aim for volumes. So pressure control, when we're talking about this, again, we're talking about the delta P control. So here's an example of pressure control ventilation. On the image on the left, the operator has set a PEEP of five, a delta P control of 15, the total pressure is 20, so it's 20 on five. But in the image on the left, 20 on five results in only 186 of tidal volume. If you are aiming, for a larger tidal volume, say for example, between the 68 mils per kilo, and that would fall roughly around 450, 
the practitioner would slowly increase the pressure control until the volumes that you are aiming for are achieved. In the example on the right, the PEEP is plus five, the operator has increased the pressure control to 25, that's a delta, so the total pressure is 30 on five, and they are getting approximately the volumes they were aiming for. So to highlight how pressure control ventilation and PRVC are very similar, is on the left, you're going to see the image. So here you have a peak of 29, you have the pressure waveform, you have a PEEP of plus 5, a delta P control of 24, so that's a total pressure of 29 on 5. You're achieving approximately 469 of volumes, and your flow waveform is a decelerating flow. The same patient, when you switch to pressure control ventilation to PRVC, in the instance on the right, you are now in PRVC, the peak pressure is 29, the pressure waveform looks the same, the flow waveform looks the same, it's a decelerating flow pattern, and you're achieving a roughly the same volumes. When are they not the same? So in pressure control ventilation, a change in compliance or resistance may result in a change in the tidal volume. So it's the operator who must adjust the P control to continue to meet the aim for that patient. Where in PRVC, one of the benefits of PRVC is that the ventilator automatically adjusts the pressure breath by breath to achieve the targeted volume. This is a benefit. So can you switch from pressure control ventilation to PRVC? You absolutely can. So how would we attempt to do this? Well, in PCV+, Plus, you'll notice that the volume, the VTE is highlighted in the red box. So it's achieving 469. So when setting up the ventilator in PRVC, CMV+, the operator would then input the volumes they were achieving on pressure control ventilation, if that was the desired volume, and input that into the targeted volume. So here, you would input the same rate, I time, flow trigger, PEEP, and oxygen, and you would input the 470 as the targeted tidal volume. The ventilator will ramp up to deliver that targeted volume. And as you can see on the right, it's the same pressure, same pressure waveform. It's achieving roughly the same targeted volumes and the same decelerating flow waveform. So if the patient was on pressure control, what do we monitor? So the monitoring that we are looking for is you must, the operator must watch the tidal volumes to ensure your gate gene within your aim of six to eight mils per kilo. Everything else is the same as PRVC. You must observe the flow waveforms, inspiratory and expiratory, the plateau airway pressures, and the alarms. Report and documentation is an area that is also confusing, and it varies in the nomenclature, in the literature, and also on different ventilators. So to make it clear, we want to ensure we're clear as possible when we're presenting this information. And Hamilton T1 even noted that it is different amongst different ventilator companies and in the literature. So to clear that up in the Hamilton 3.0 software that's going to be happening, you're going to notice that everywhere you're in a pressure setting, they're going to put a delta symbol added to every pressure setting label that defines a pressure above PEEP. So here is going to be the triangle symbol, and it's going to be applied to PINSP, P support, and P control. So when you're reporting, you'll report the delta P insp, the delta P support, the delta P control. So when we're reporting, we should report the PEEP plus five, delta P control, 25 in this example. The total pressure is 30. We would document this as 30 on five. The exact same pertains in BiPAP. In the example on the left, we have a PEEP of five. We have a delta P support of eight. We have a total pressure of 13 on five. We would document 13 on five. In the example on the right, we have a PEEP of six, a delta P support of 12. We have a total pressure of 18 on six, and we would document 18 on six. 
Take home points, PCV Plus is very similar to PRVC. You can safely switch from PCV Plus to PRVC. Delta means the pressure applied above PEEP and P control, P ins, and P support are all pressures above PEEP. And report and document, report the PEEP, the delta pressure, and the total pressure. You can pause right now and do a post-assessment questions of the information we just covered. After you've completed that, or if you just want to move on to the next slide, the answers are on the next slide. And that is the end of the presentation.